Welcome everyone. So today we're going to be covering CompTIA's A+, Objectives Section 1.1, given a scenario, install and configure laptop hardware and components. We're going to start with keyboard. What they're looking for is your ability to uh, know that there's different layouts and form factors depending on the make and model of a laptop. They're also wanting you to be able to troubleshoot and either repair or replace a keyboard and what steps and proper procedures would you do to make sure that you did it safely without creating more damage and that you verified that that keyboard is indeed working now. So I'm going to go over two scenarios when a user comes to me and they let me know that their keyboard stopped working. First thing I do is ask them a couple questions. For instance, has anything changed on the keyboard? Uh, what was going on during the time that it stopped working? The user informs me that they were traveling and that all of a sudden one day it just stopped working. So what I do is I take uh, possession of the keyboard, look at it, make sure it's nothing simple. And then if it's not, I go ahead then and um, I assume that it's probably, or I have a theory that it's uh, probably a ribbon cable that came loose. So what I would do then is I would unplug the, the laptop, I would remove the battery, I would employ some type of ESD prevention measures such as an anti-static strap or mat. I would then start taking the laptop apart and I would label, if need be, the components or the screws that I'm taking out. That way, when I go ahead and put them back together, I can do it in the proper order. I would then check the ribbon cable, reseat it. I would then partially put the laptop back together in a way that's safe to restart the computer so I could check and see if that keyboard is working. Let's say it is working. After I reseated the ribbon cable, I would go ahead and fully put it back together in the proper order. I would then retest it one more time before I handed it off to the user my company required it, I would then document uh, what I did and how I did it and what resolved it. So uh, scenario two would be a user comes to me that their laptop keyboard stopped working and they inform me that they spilled liquid on it. So I would go and look and see maybe if I could just clean that liquid off. So sometimes you, you can do it from the top part, but a lot of the times you'll have to pull that um, keyboard out so you would do the same procedure and pulling it out as what I described in scenario one and in that case you might be able to clean it and and then it you know works fine you'll go ahead and test it after you clean it if it's working you're done if not you'll have to do a full replacement now on to hard drives hard drives they're looking for you know for you to know the pros and the cons of SSD hybrid magnetic disk they're looking for, uh, for you to understand the different form factors. They've only got two form factors listed in this section, but later on you're going to need to learn about 3.5 inch M.2. So for now, we'll just focus on the 2.5 inch and the 1.8 inch. But they're just looking for you to understand, you know, what normally would be in a traditional laptop, what size, and that would be the 2.5 inch. They're going to want you to know. The pros and cons of an SSD, for instance, an SSD, you, the pros of it is it's uh, faster usually, it consumes less power, creates less heat, um, it's more durable in, in terms of you can't really shock damage it like you can a magnetic disk or a hybrid drive because it doesn't have any movable parts. Um, but the negatives of it is it does cost more. Um, you can't store SSD long term with it off, you lose your data on there. Um, for magnetic disk drive, uh, pros are they're cheaper. Um, the, another pro is you can get larger sizes for storage. Another pro would be that you could store it long term without losing the data. Now the cons are, of course, that it's uh, have moving parts so they fail easier, especially if they're jolted or shocked. Uh, they create more heat, they use more um, power they uh, they're louder so you know those are things that you want to keep in mind um, so moving on to memory what they're going to want to know here is they're going to want to know your 
you know, the differences between DDR, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4. So they're going to want to know, for instance, DDR1 and 2, they both have 200 pin. And they're, they're, going, to, they're going to want you to know the voltages that they run out. Uh, DDR3, they're going to want you to know um, the pins for, you know, example, 204 pin uh, and the voltage that it runs at. They're going to want to know DDR4 and the voltages that it runs at plus the 260 pin that it has. So you just got to keep that in mind when you're, um, and they're going to want you to know not only about so dim, but micro dim. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Um, and then they're going to want you to be able to troubleshoot uh, issues with memory. Now they're going to be able to, later on, we'll get into more uh, how they're going to want you to be able to replace and update memory. So those are things to keep in mind. Smart card reader, they're looking for you to understand when it's appropriate, what scenario would be appropriate to incorporate a smart card reader. Normally they're used for security. For instance, in a business, you can't maybe access the internet or you can't access the network without putting in your card in the smart card reader. So they're gonna want you to understand the appropriate scenarios. Um, optical drive, they're going to want you to know how to replace them and troubleshoot them as well. But they're also going to want you to know how to, uh, the different formats like CDR, CDRW, DVDR, DVRW. They're going to want you to know about those and when to use those appropriately. Um, wireless cards and Bluetooth modules, they're going to want you to be able to troubleshoot those. They're going to want you to know what they look like how to replace them, same with the cellular card, same exact thing, what they're, what would be a good scenario to use one of those in. Um, video cards, they're gonna want you to know about dedicated versus onboard video, pros and cons of that, how to troubleshoot video. They're, they're gonna want you to know about mini PCIe slots, uh, what, they're, what cards can go in those slots, um, the size of those slots compared to regular PCIe. For screens, they're going to want you to know about LED, LCD, OLED, pros and the cons of those screens. When would it be appropriate to use one over the other? Uh, DC jacks, they're going to want you to know that there's different jacks for different laptops and you need to know how to read those, um, those type of uh, AC adapters that um, that way you order the pro appropriate one for the laptop and don't order the wrong one because they're not universal. They want you to know, you know, that batteries, same thing. They want you to be able to read uh, the input output voltage, uh, look at the connectors and know if it's appropriate for your laptop. So again, when you're ordering it for a customer, you're getting the right one. Touchpad, they're going to want you to know how to troubleshoot that as in, you know, maybe it stopped working, maybe it's disabled in the OS, you need to know how to enable, disable it. You need to know um, how to use them. For instance, they're similar to a mouse in that you can scroll with them, you can, you know, push the left uh, button. Some of them have buttons, some don't, but they're the left side of it or left button, double tap, uh, right button, right side. Um, they just want you to have a general idea of how to troubleshoot and how to replace touchpads. Plastic frames, they don't have metal frames here, but they're gonna want you to know about both. So you're gonna to wanna to know the pros and the cons of metal frames versus uh, plastic frames, for instance. Metal frames are much more durable, uh, but a con is they cost a lot more. And plastic frames are cheaper, and the con is they're not as durable. Speakers, they're gonna want you to understand the type of speakers that normally uh, go into um, a laptop. For instance, you normally only get two speakers for stereo, but sometimes you can get a subwoofer in a laptop, especially like a gaming laptop, for instance. But they're going to want you to know how to troubleshoot speakers if they're not working. So something to think about. We'll get into more of that later. What they're going to want you to understand with system board is there's, there's different form factors and that you're not going to be able to install one system board from one laptop into another laptop because of that. They're also going to want you to be able to understand how to troubleshoot a system board, how to replace a system board. For CPUs, same thing. They're going to want you to, 
the know-how to look up a CPU to make sure that if you are going to be replacing it, um, you're replacing it with one that will work with that system board and how to replace it and the steps you would take to troubleshoot, replace, and uh, to make sure that everything is working when you're done. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll try to get them as quick as possible. And if you can, please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, and share since I'm a new channel. I'd really appreciate that. Until next time.